In the upcoming clip of Noam Chomsky debating Patrick Bet David they are touching on the subject of wage slavery and how institutions are set up in the capitalist system. Let's go over Chomsky's thoughts on these matters. Chomsky criticizes the power imbalance inherent in capitalist systems. Workers, he argues often have little control over their working conditions or the value they create. This lack of control can be seen as a form of coercion, forcing them to accept work to survive. Chomsky emphasizes the concept of alienation, where workers become separated from the fruits of their labor. They perform tasks dictated by others, with little sense of purpose or fulfillment beyond the paycheck. Now off to this wonderful clip and following some more points by Chomsky. So what do you think about the guy that worked at IBM and he was making 30 bucks an hour and he works there and he's one of the public, he's one of the smaller guys and he leaves after making $82,000, he doesn't like the way IBM does something, goes and starts his own company, he becomes a billionaire. He went from being the public to being the top 1% of 1% of America. Is he now a bad person? I have no, I am not talking about the choices that individuals make. These are the footnotes. If you want to be totally naive about the situate system, take a look at the footnotes. If you want to pay attention to the things that matter, take a look at the major institutional factors. Okay, we have a high concentration of economic power, has enormous influence over the state. Uh, we have institutions based on a conception that classical liberals would have despised, namely subordinating yourself to a master in most of your waking life. Uh, those are the fundamental principles mm -hmm. on which the economy is based. Okay, I don't care about what some guy in IBM decides to do with his life. That's for him to decide. So, so if that's the case, so what is a system? So it seems like it's a sin for me to employ somebody in your eyes. Like if I employ anybody and pay them a salary, it's a sin. So what's my alternative? What should I do to be holy where I'm not taking advantage, in your eyes, where I'm not taking advantage of somebody else? Because in your eyes, if the private, if the private market hires and gives somebody a job, they're like, a, they own the person. So what do we do though? So walk me through it. So one of the criticisms that we do, what, what do we, we do? do yeah. Exactly what John Stuart Mill talked about what Abraham Lincoln talked about, what all classical liberals talked about before it was destroyed. The uh, management and decisions and control should be in hands of the participants. You should change autocratic, tyrannical structures to democratic participatory ones, okay? Have that you, have you ever the... ran a company? Noam, have you ever ran a company? Have I ever run a country? Company? No. Okay. On the company side to say, have the people who created it run it. The people it, it, who it, created it don't run it. They turn over they turn it over to managers who run it. They may make some contribution or they may just go somewhere and live off the accumulated capital. But the fact is the matter the, and the question is of the people who manage it, should they be appointed by a tyrannical authority, which is unaccountable? or should they be chosen by participation of the actual, the people who actually take part in and run the place? Should they be able to participate and control and decide how to manage and run it? And I think we should move towards a kind of system in which the classical liberal ideals are realized. And I... people are able to democratically participate in deciding how to manage and run their lives, including the institutions in which they work. For professor, with and all due respect, if you think I, they ought to be tyrannies, fine, say so. <laughs> it's not, but that's what that's what your interpretation is. You use words like exploit. You use words as tyrant, tyrannic, tyrannical leaders. You use well, that's they are. Your, that's there's, but, there's, there's but, nothing. But, but there's but there's a lot of people to sit there and say. You know, we also had folks that create, these are no, many of these folks are noble human beings who took time away from their families at a time to create a job and create a business that led to creating jobs for other people. 50% of jobs in America today are created by small business owners. These people are not millionaires. These are folks that maybe run a liquor store, maybe run a small market, maybe run a small shop, maybe do some real estate locally and they hire five people that work for them. They make a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year. That's half of America's employed by small business owners. Are yes. they tyrannical? 
entrepreneurs and business. Not, so you you continue to take the extremely naive. I point think of your view, take. I do use your taking, word of talking about the individuals. I haven't said a word in criticism about Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or any somebody running a small store. You, Is it impossible for you to break out of this looking at footnotes naively at the individuals and refusing to look? at the institutions in which they function. You take a look at the institution to which, so take a, take a business, take a, a Microsoft. Microsoft is pure, a pure example of absolute tyranny. The decisions are made at the top. They're handed down to the next level, go down to the bottom. At the very bottom, you have the right to wrench yourself to them. That's what was abhorred not only by classical liberals, but by thousands of years of tradition. We've internalized it, yeah. and I don't think we should. I think these institutions should be run democratically by the people who participate in them. That's the issue. That's nothing to do with individuals. Maybe the guy who runs it is the nicest guy in the world. Fine. I'm talking about what the institution does. So let's take uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, the world's biggest bank. Maybe the guy who writes it, who runs it, is the absolute nicest guy in the world. He is institutionally constrained to spend the money of J.P. Morgan Chase to destroy the prospects for human life on Earth. That's If he doesn't do it, he'll be replaced by somebody else who will do it. That's the nature of the state capitalist system. And if we're serious about the world, that's what we ought to be looking at, not whether this or that guy is a nice person. Chomsky points to historical thinkers who compared wage labor to slavery. He highlights how classical liberals like Wilhelm von Humboldt saw the lack of free choice in work as dehumanizing. Chomsky advocates for worker participation in decision-making within companies. This, he believes, could lessen the power imbalance and give workers more control over their labor. In the debate where Chomsky became frustrated with Bette David's lack of picking up the concept of institutional structure, I often analogize it that, you have to play the game that way to succeed, but what has to happen is the type of game should be changed. Hopefully, that clears things up. Well, I hope you like the video and give the channel a subscribe. You can now join the channel and become a member, that would be greatly appreciated. I also started another channel Progressive Movement, the link is on the home page. I hope you subscribe to that also. Now, take care and bye-bye.